Praise God. Praise God. Good morning. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. I pray that you're having a blessed day in the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Um, I guess some are saying, well, she's doing more audios. That's because I'm busy. I'm working on books. I'm working on all kinds of stuff. But praise God. Praise God. God got me busy. But I want to bring a subject out. You know, all Jesus did. And I'm going to go straight into it. Like I said, good morning. God bless you. And I hope that you're ready to roll. Let's do this. Um, today is also the 24th day of the fast, 40 day fast. Praise God. Let's keep it going. I'm, we almost there. We almost there. Not yet, but we almost there. Praise God. So if you look at my title and I'm going to get straight up in it, um, demons are real. Now I think it's funny that we have a church that's scared of demons. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Y'all talk about prosperity and how blessed you want to be, but y'all don't want to cast out demons. Well, let me tell you something. And, and I reiterate this not to bash the church. I need y'all to understand that, but let me tell you something. Jesus was real. He dealt with real situations. We have a church that try to camouflage things. That's why we're not as a group, as a whole, as a body of Christ, getting healed and delivered for real. See, people talk a good game, walk a good game, play a good game, but demons are real. And it's time for the church to start casting them out because all you doing, and let me tell you something, I don't care what nobody say. I don't want just everybody touching me. I don't want to hug you. I'm sorry. If you full of demonic demons, why would I want you to touch me? Why would I want you to hug me? All you doing is passing them spirits on. And so people need to stop playing. So now we have a church full of spirits and wondering why the works of the flesh is at hand and the spirit of God is not working in the church. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And, and I'm going to go so deep today. It is gonna, it's going to back some of you up. Let me tell you something. We've always had the disciples. Now I'm about to, and this is Bible trivia. And I challenge every last one of you to find out if it's true or not. Did the disciples belong to a church? That's what I need you to know. The Pharisees and Sadducees, they were a sector. They were the church, right? Or may I say a sector of the church. So why didn't the disciples go under the Pharisees? They stayed under Jesus Christ, right? Now, why did Jesus pick 12 disciples from the gate? Oh, come on, somebody. How do you, I'm going all the way in this morning. Why did Jesus pick 12 disciples? That's a question. Think about it. And I'm going to give you the answer after, uh, on this live afterwards. But notice, he picked 12 because he said, I want to show you how to do this thing. So apparently, the Pharisees and Sadducees didn't know what they were doing. Well, my question is, who is the Pharisees and Sadducees today? Is it still the church? <laughs> Y'all ain't ready for me this morning. The mainstream is Pharisees and Sadducees, whether you like it or not. On the backside, Jesus is still... Come on, somebody choosing disciples to disciple. Y'all ain't ready for me. Yeah, I say what I said. And then you're going to catch it in a minute. So I'm going to go back to my title, but I want to leave you with some questions because they do have answers. So that's why we have a church that's not casting out demons because most of them are Pharisees and Sadducees looking good. I'm talking about everybody got on their attire, mostly business attire because things is as business as usual. But no one's casting out demons. You see, everybody's preaching a game. I'm talking about flamboyancy. We're talking about intelligence. Oh, I'm talking about they're preaching, even on Facebook. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. But are they teaching? You see, there's a difference between preaching and teaching. You can preach all day long. But when you teach, you see, that, that's the thing. Jesus taught his disciples. Not only did he teach them, there was manifestation of the power of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So we're going to talk about demons. We're going to talk about demons this morning. And we're going to actually go to chapters. So right now, I want to talk to you about 16 biblically named demons, demonic spirits. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all, I'm going to get on here later. There's something that happened yesterday that, that I want to tell y'all about, and I was very upset about it. And my thing is, I know it was planned, and um, I'm going to deal with that accordingly. Ladies, men and women of God, stop letting people touch you. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me. I don't care what nobody say. The, even the Bible says in 2 Timothy, it says, lay hands on no man suddenly. I wonder why he says that. Because nothing was written just to be written. It was something that happened. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. 
So let, walk with me, walk with me this morning. So the first spirit we're going to deal with, and the church is definitely heavy with it, spirit of divination. And we're going through Acts, Acts chapter 16, and I'm going to read 16 through 18. Now the manifestations of divination are fortune teller, soothsayer, warlock, satanist, witch, wiccan, druid, pagan, stargazer, zodiac, horoscopes, rebellion, hip, hip top hippiness, you know, uh, enchanter, drugs, Greek, which is pharmacaeus, pharmacos, water, witching, divination, magic. Okay. So let's start. So Acts 16 through 18 says, and it came to pass as we went to prayer, a Satan or certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us with brought us, I'm sorry, brought her masters much gain by suit saying. So you got to understand what's happening in the church. A lot of people thinking, oh, they, they gifted. I'm going to remind you of the prophets of Baal. It was 450 against one Elijah. Now, I know some of you are not going to understand this, and that's why I say you with dealing with a person who have a mandate like myself, you got to go to God. You really got to go to God and ask God, is she telling the truth? I'm just being real with you. That's what you're going to have to do. Because if you don't understand it, you don't understand it. There are Everybody's not prophets. The same as it was in the old is the same as it is now. Y'all don't notice all these apostles and prophets? Well, let me tell you something. When you really have that calling, there should be a manifestation in your speech, in your walk, in your talk. And it should be the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you do not see the true power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, then it's not authentic. Oh, I just said something. And yeah, I'm saying what I'm saying. A lot of people are sued saying a spirit of just getting money. Get that money, man. Y'all know it's the truth. All right, let me continue. Verse 17. The same followed Paul and us and cried saying, these men are the servants of the most high God. Notice they always know who you are. What shows us the way to salvation. That is what we're supposed to be teaching in these days. Salvation, 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 salvation. Nobody want to hear about how good you got it when everybody else, you know, trying to eat. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. And, and, and I got to say this, and, and some of y'all are not going to agree with me, and, I, and I'm cool with that. One of the things I never understood, and I guess Bible college did this to me. When we had to do the tabernacle and we had to recreate it in Bible college, I studied. Whenever I do, I studied to, I mean, I immerse myself with it. And one of the things I noticed in the tabernacle of Moses, which was first, and then the tabernacle of David came, is that in the tabernacle, this is the way they did it. When they took up offering and a collection, and they did you know what they did? They dispersed it among everyone. And guess what? Everybody ate. Now, maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. What, what do you, I don't know what y'all thinking. But I just don't seem to think that it's just, just supposed to be about the pastor, the preacher, and the teacher. I believe the way God started it is the way it should be ending. Y'all ain't ready for me. And I know some of you are not going to agree, and that's fine too. But I will say this. That's what they did. That's what Moses did. That's what David did. So are you telling me, excuse me, that the foundation is not the same and it cannot be the same when it started that way? And God said, I'm the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Somebody lying. I don't know who lying, but somebody lying. So why is it that the way that's the way it's supposed to be today? I know it's supposed to be that way. And yet no one does it. There is no way. And what they did is they made sure that the elderly had first the widows and then they dispersed the rest. Anybody else need whatever. I truly believe that that's the way that God intended his church to be ran. Now, man got another thing going. Because how is it, pastor, preacher, teacher, prophet, apostle, that you can ride with your Bentley and your nice car through the neighborhood and yet they starving? But I digress because y'all ain't ready for that. Y'all ain't ready for that because y'all giving them all y'all money. Yes, God saved the tithe. I truly believe that with all my heart, mind, body, and soul. can show you a scripture, not just in Malachi. But at the same token, God never meant for one person to eat. I don't care what you say. God never meant for one person to exceed because we are a body. One Lord, one body, one baptism. And if the church don't understand that, that's why you got people trying to compete. That's why you got things happening because it's out of order. But 
I got a feeling that God got a remnant y'all ain't ready for me. That's bringing order back to the body of Christ, whether you like it or not. Because thus said the Lord, that's my church. That's my people. And my son died for it, not yours. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Y'all ain't ready for me this morning. All right. So let me continue. Verse 18. And this did she many days, but Paul being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. This is the mandate of the church of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, not stars, not cars. I'm sorry. The mandate is to cast out anything that is not of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. By the name and authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But I digress again. Let me stay with my um, text here. So we're talking about 16 demonic spirits. Okay. Now you got to understand also it's called roots, the work of the flesh. Okay. So the second spirit we're going to tackle is the familiar spirit, which most people work with. Excuse me. That's why most people backslide. If you ever notice when people come to the body of Christ, when you were a babe, you was like, man, as soon as I came to God, it seemed like everything got worse. No, what happened is you were in transition. And when you come into the body of Christ, you can't be street in the kingdom of God. You can't be hood in the kingdom of God. You can't be gangster in the kingdom of God. It just don't work because God is a holy God. So what happens is when things start getting hard, instead of you say, God, show me how to do this thing. Teach me, God, reach me, show me, send me a mentor, send me somebody that can, can stand with me, pray with me. You start going back to the familiar spirit. And when you go back to the familiar spirit, you start doing the same thing because it's insanity to do the same thing, thinking you're going to get a different result. So that's what's called familiar spirits. Now, let me tell you what happens with familiar spirit. These are the manifestations. Necromancing, that's communion with the day, medium, peeping, and muttering. What is peeping at? Like a peeping tom? These are spirits. Yoga, y'all ain't ready for me. Clamphoid, a spiritist, and it keeps saying drugs. False prophecy, uh-uh, y'all ain't ready for me. Passive mind dreamers. You know, I'm leery of people that say, um, we have dreaming classes. You know what? The Holy Spirit teaches us everything we have, we need to know. We really don't need you trying to interpret unless the spirit of the law is interpreting that. So there's so many things that's happening right now that's out of order. Don't you understand? Who is the God of this world? It is definitely the little God. God gave him permission to be God of this world. So if he's the God of this world, and remember, he took Jesus on the pinnacle and he said, if you fall down and worship me, I'll give you the glory of the kingdoms. Do you not understand what's happening? The kingdoms are happening. That's what you see. That's why I don't understand. How can you as a Christian go to the world and ask the world, hey, can I be famous? Can I be? Y'all ain't ready for me. Let me tell you something. Everything begins and starts with what he did and what he didn't do. Jesus never bowed down to Satan. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, I went and I took the keys. So the room that have the keys. So if the room that have the keys, the room does not belong to the world. The Bible says, come ye out of her. I understand this thing. At first, when I first got saved, I did not understand this. Now I do. Everybody's trying to be like the world. Everybody's trying to be this and that. Don't you understand that God commands us to come out of her? Be ye separate. Y'all ain't ready for me. So let me continue. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually go to Deuteronomy 18 for this scripture. Talk about a familiar spirit. Deuteronomy 18. And give me a minute here. Okay, I got it. So Deuteronomy 18, and I'm actually going to start at verse 11. So we're talking about spirits today, and it's a reason. Uh, I don't just ever just do anything, and I think you should know that those that follow me, I always have a story and why I'm doing what I'm doing. So chapter 18, and I'm going to go to verse 11, and it says, Or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard, or a necromancer. Believe it or not, the spirit of divination 
the familiar spirit. These are all the spirits that are working heavy at these end times. All right, let's go to the third spirit, which is spirit of jealousy. Oh my God, that's big time. I mean, that's why you have competition in the church. This one want to be the top prophet. That one, we're all supposed to be working together, but you, you got so much envy and jealousy in the body of Christ right now that you, people can't even get along for two minutes without somebody getting upset. So the spirit of jealousy, let me tell you what these spirits, remember I told you a long time ago, not just one spirit works. They all works together, just like the fruits of the spirit, peace, love, long suffering, joy. So it's never just one spirit. So when you see a person working with a spirit, it's always attached to other spirits. So the spirit of jealousy, murder, revenge, spite, anger, rage, jealousy, hatred. Y'all going to get this cruelty, strife, contention, competition, there it goes, envy, and it causes division. Oh, come on, somebody. So what we're going to go, and this actually is the works of the flesh. So we're going to actually go to Galatians, Galatians 519, 519 to 21. So I'm breaking this thing down for you because it, it's just too much. It's just too many demons. I'm going to be real with you, and I'm getting sick of them. I've been sick of them. That's why they don't like me, and I don't like them. Let's just be real about that thing. Um, Jesus, you know, if you really look at Jesus' ministry the whole three years, he did some miracles, but he mostly cast out demons. So my thing is, if Jesus cast out demons, then why is the church scared of demons? I'm going to tell you why, because guess what? Demon can't cast out another demon. Okay, so 519 through 21. So 519 through 21. So we're going to start verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest that what? Are manifest. I'm sorry, excuse me. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lavishness. Verse 20. Adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, immolations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Verse 21. Envious, murders, drunkenness, revelance, and such like of the which I tell you before as I also told you to time. Past that these which do these things should not inherit the kingdom of God. Period. End of story. People be thinking everybody going to heaven. Okay, whatever. All right. So the next spirit we're going to talk about is the lying spirit. Mm. Y'all know people be lying, right? Somebody, that's what y'all wonder why I got that somebody lying. I think God gave me that. <laughs> anyway, it says strong deceptions. And that's what's in the body of Christ right now. Strong deceptions, flattery, superstitions, false prophecy, accusation, slander, gossip, lies, false teachers. Okay, so we're going to go to actually that's a, 2 Thessalonians 9 to 13. So roll with me. Second Thessalonians 9 to 13. Just one moment here. Yes, praise God, praise God. And uh, I'm going somewhere with all this because, but you know, the only way that you can identify these demons is if you're walking in the spirit. And if you're not walking in the spirit, you cannot. I'm telling you right now, it's just, um, it's just not going to happen. Okay, Second Th Thessalonians, second chapter. 19 to 13. I'm sorry. 9 to 13. All right. So here we go. Even him which coming in after the working of Satan with all the power and signs. Notice with all power and signs and lying wonders. You truly have to test the spirit by the spirit in this hour. I'm telling you, I've seen things that look like God, sound like God. But one thing about Apostle Deanna, I'm going to God. I don't care if it was me. I don't care who it is. You're supposed to test that spirit by the spirit. And if it don't line up, somebody lying, period, end of story. And you got to understand, in these last days, all power and signs and lying wonders. Verse 10, and with all deceivable of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth. Didn't I tell you, when you truly love Jesus Christ, you serve him, you obey him. There is a love, but not just a love, a love for the truth. And he says, and the truth shall set you free. Soon as you know the truth, you are set free. That's why most people, they really love lies because they're not ready to be free. Not everybody is ready to be healed and delivered. I know some of you shocked at that, but it's true. Some people love the sin that they're in. Come on, somebody write that in the comments. Some people love the sin that they in, whether you like it or not. And you can love them all day long. They got to want it. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. That they might be saved. Now, let me read that again. 
It received not the love of truth that they might be saved. You can only be saved by the truth. Verse 11. And for this cause, God should send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Don't you understand? That's what it's called a reprobate mind. God is actually a lie. You want that? I'm going to give you that. That's pretty much what he's saying. Come on, somebody. You, you, you want to be that nasty? You want to do this? You want to do that? I'm going to give it to you. That is why Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. God allowed their own sin to find them out and their own sin to take them over. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm preaching today. Hallelujah. And teaching. All right. So let's continue through 12. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth. Are y'all listening? This is scripture. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse 12, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You know, I don't know if people are really preaching this Bible, because when you read this Bible and you read the truth, it should scare the hell out you literally. Y'all ain't read it for me. I'm going to read that one more time. That's how powerful this scripture is. They that all might be damned who believe not the truth. So you mean to tell me that if you don't believe this truth, you're damned, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. That is what the world is doing. All these stars. And I'm going to name some. Now, I don't really care if y'all get mad. Y'all already know I ain't scared of y'all, right? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to be. Let me tell you something. Cardi B, the other one, B, uh, y'all know her name. The Anse. I don't even like to say her name. I just say, you know, part of it. Why do you think these people have been chosen as high priestess to represent the kingdom of darkness? They lure people with lust. It's, let me tell you what God told me. This is like Sodom and Gomorrah all over again. But this is the deal. We're, this is about to be over with. So it's almost to the tenth power. You notice how people love lust, love sex. If you really look at them, look at the way they dress. Even the men. That That's why God did not want people in the pulpit with clothes because guess what and, and, and i'm going somewhere y'all get mad if you want i'm leery of people who preach in nice clothes yeah i say what i say you can get mad all day long y'all better listen to what i'm saying because what are you trying to really do are you seducing my spirit or are you or are you preaching the word of god i said something because the world shows us that clothes y'all ain't ready and i'm not saying that god don't want you to have something nice but y'all better look deeper this stuff is deeper. Whatever it takes to seduce you. Cause, because guess what? It's called the art of seduction. And that's what the enemy is a master at. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm going here. Have you ever been seduced? Don't lie now, because I know I have. Oh, you are so seduced until you don't even know that you seduced, huh? I mean, it hit you so hard. Even when they preaching and teaching, y'all ain't ready for me, huh? Things are happening on a deeper level. That's why people are being tainted on a deeper level. Even a preacher, a pastor, they some of, sometimes they look good. Notice the clothes they wear. I'm going somewhere. You will always notice the level of spirit by the clothes they wear. I'm going here. When you are truly a man or woman of God, God will say, cover up. Don't entice nobody. How are you going to preach and tempt somebody at the same time? Write it in the comments. How are you going to preach and teach and tempt somebody at the same time? Man of God, woman of God, somebody lying again. You mean to tell me with your fine self that you're going to tempt somebody? So they're not thinking about what's coming out of your mouth. They're looking at your body. That is not of God. I don't care how y'all slice it and dice it. Show me in scripture where that's of God. That's how people are getting stuff into them. Because guess this, even, even through this live audio, don't you know whatever spirit that they're working with is the spirit that will connect with yours? I don't want everybody connecting with my spirit talking about lust, um, idolatry, um, jealousy, whatever spirit that is not of God. People be mindful of who you let feed you. Y'all ain't ready. Ain't nobody could just feed my spirit. And no one should just be able to feed yours. I'm not saying you got to hate people. But I am saying test the spirit by the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Too many of y'all just letting anybody talk to y'all just because they look good. The church then got to where everybody want to be prosperous. That's a good thing. Okay, fine. You want to be prosperous. But the Bible says, I wish that thy soul prosper. God is worried about your soul. All this stuff going to burn up, whether y'all like it or not. And some of you have gotten accustomed to the world. That's why you don't like this kind of preaching and teaching. 
But I know that we are just visitors here. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And God is coming back soon. Y'all ain't ready for me. Hallelujah to his name. So let me continue. Let me go to verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks any always to God for you, brethren, believe of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning, listen this, chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and the belief of the truth. Let me read that one again. Verse 13, second to Thessalonians chapter two, verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, believe of the Lord because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. You know, I, I'm very transparent. I told y'all the first um, 10 years I really played. Can I tell y'all why I, I, I saw everybody else do it. And, and look, hold on accountability. I did what I did. I was wrong. Fornicate and drink and did everything. And even after that, a, a few times, just to keep it real, I didn't start getting real to, to God stop exposing me, you know, and I'm, I'm going to go a little bit deeper. So I was, you know, like I said, everybody else was doing this. So I thought I could do it. God said, you're not everybody else, Deanna. And I mean, this is what really changed my life. God exposed me. I'm sitting up there drinking. And I was, um, I, I forgot, I think I was at some Mexican restaurant and I was with my dad and he said, uh, baby, slow down. I'm, I'm thinking, I don't know what I'm thinking. And so long story short, I'm just going to keep it real. I ended up getting a DUI that night. Yeah, I keep it real on purpose. I was so embarrassed because now I'm in a newspaper, so I can't lie, right? I said, God, you ain't had to do that. He said, yes, I did. I told you to stop playing with me. Y'all ain't ready for me, huh? I, I I know my truth is a little bit too much truth, right? But it's, it's going to save you. It's going to save you because some of you playing now. Y'all, I stopped playing with God. I said, I said, he, he, I, said I can't do nothing. I said, everybody else could do it, but I can't do it. He said, because you're not like everybody else. He said, I got something inside of you, and this is not about you, Deanna. Come on, somebody, hallelujah, walk with me. You guys, when I saw how real this was, this is about people's souls. You don't have the right to play. You don't have the right to fornicate and preach. You don't have the right to lie and preach. You don't have the right. Because guess what? You are tainting somebody if you get yourself up there and preach and teach, even on Facebook, knowing you wrong and dirty. Because everything that you do is being spursed out. You see, every spirit that you have is attached to you. So you don't have the right to taint other people's spirit. God going to get you. Y'all ain't ready for me. Y'all ain't ready for me. That's why people can't handle me. Because my truth is my truth. Y'all ain't ready for me. Let me continue this lesson. Hallelujah. As I say sometimes, y'all, I never did so much wrong if I'd have known God would make me tell on myself so much. <laughs> it's all good. Because when you're free, you're free. All right. So the next spirit, we just got finished with the lion spirit. Let's go with perverse spirit. Now, that this this is taking over the church, which I rebuke in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I mean, anything that is not of Christ is a perversion. I need you to hear me. Because even the music. Ooh, thank you, God. That's good. Now, Satan was the choir director, right? So since he was the choir director, do anybody understand what's really happening here? Notice the music of yesterday. It was kind of boring. I know, right? People didn't like it. So then God never took his gift from him, but it was perverted. Oh, this is good. Walk with me. Walk with me. Whenever you are of Jesus Christ, you are holy. I didn't say perfect. I say holy, striving towards perfection. But now what happens is, if you ever decide to leave Jesus Christ and do your own thing, everything turns into perverse. You know what I'm saying? Like a, a woman with a woman, a man with a man. Anything that is not of God is perverse. You don't hear me. That's why pedophiles like to sleep with kids. Um, that's why adulterers. Anything that is not of God is perverse. Why do you think? The music is such a powerful medium. It speaks to your spirit. And think about it. I'm going somewhere. You're listening to it. Everything is a spirit, right? So when you're listening to that perverse music, that's why you want to go do this. That's why people want to shoot up things. That's why people want to have sex. Oh, come on, somebody. Walk with me. Those that used to listen to Luther and still do. Come on, somebody. Or Marvin Gaye, sexual healing. Don't some music make you want to... Don't play with me. So everything is a spirit. That's why you have to guard your spirit or guard your gates. Because if not, 
I promise you, sooner or later, you keep listening to it. You're going to want to do it. I don't care. Oh, come on, somebody. This stuff is real. So let me continue What the perverse spirit do. It is attracted to the broken spirit. You ever notice how many people are broken in this hour and yet they want to preach to broken people, hurt people, hurt people, broken people, break people. Y'all ain't ready for me. Whatever spirit is in you, that's what you're working with. All right, let me continue. Evil actions. Atheists, abortions, did y'all know that? So the perverse spirit, it wants to kill child abuse, a filthy mind. Doctrinal error, did y'all know that? Sex perversions, twisting the word, foolish, chronic warrior, contentions, incest, pornography. So all these spirits is actually, you know, it actually works together. I told you, it will never be just one spirit. Okay, so to back that up, I'm going to go to Philipp Philippians 2, 14 to 16. Just one moment, you guys. I got a lot going on here as far as these scriptures out. Because I, I want it. if you notice what I'm doing lately, and I'm doing it on purpose, it's time that you understand how the word of God is supposed to be preached and teached. We are not supposed to get up on here without without just preaching and teaching without the word of God. And that's why I went back to the foundations. And from now on, I would do that because God says, he said, Deanna, they preach in error. They teach in error. They're making people just feel good, make them feel like you're, you're often to get a blessing. It's time to come back to straight scripture, which is called principles. Because when you teach principles, nobody can't argue with it. You can't because it's the word of God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So Philippians 2, 14. So I'm going to start at 14. Do all things without murmurs and dis, um, disputings. Make sure. Hold on. Yeah. Philippians. Yeah. 2.14. Okay. Oh, no. I'm sorry, you guys. Hold. Yeah, it is 2.14 to 16. Okay. And then 15. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among who you shine as lights in the world. You know, that's why the world don't like us. We're not like the world. You see, the world of its own. Y'all, y'all, oh, y'all ain't ready for me. And, and, and it's not hating. Y'all don't know why some preachers are loved by the world? <laughs> Hello? Are you listening? Okay. I think you are. Verse 16. Holding forth the word of God and the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not rump in vain, either labor in vain. Praise God, praise God. And I'm going to actually give you one more. Um, 1 Timothy 6. 1 Timothy 6. All right, so I'm going to 1 Timothy chapter 6. And the verse is going to be 4 and 5. So, okay, so here we go. Verse 4 and 5, it says, He is proud, knowing nothing, but doing about questions and strifes of words, whereof come in envy, strife, railings, evil summings. 5. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. Mm, Y'all ain't ready for that one. That gain is godliness from... From which withdraw thyself. Okay, I'm going to have to read that again. Verse 5. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. Supposing that gain is godliness. Wait a minute. I got to stop right there. Y'all don't see what's happening? That's why people are hurting and doing things. Somebody that prospered preaching came in and now it looks like... Well, if you don't have none, God might not be with you. Now, I didn't say that God just wants us all to be poor. I'm not saying that. But now people are equating materialism to godliness. The more you have, the more God you have. The devil is a lie. I've seen stuff that blow your mind. Most of these famous ones, God have gone. It's like a Samson spirit. They don't even know God have left them. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. And that's fine. But anyway, the Bible says from them withdraw thyself. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let me continue. So talk about spirits. I'm talking about spirits. Praise God. So we're going to kind of like push it on. 
All right. So the spirits I'm talking about now is spirit of haughtiness. Okay. And these are the manifestations, arrogant, smug, pride, idleness, scornful, strife, deception, obstinate, continuous, self-righteous, rebellion. All right. Now we're going to go to the spirit of heaviness, excessive mourning, sorrow, grief, insomnia. Did you know that when you have a spirit of heaviness, you can't do anything. Broken hearted, pity, rejection, despair, dejection, hopelessness. Praise God. All right. Which are the works of the flesh? Ooh, now this one is deep. Spirit of whoredoms, unfaithfulness, adultery, spirit, so and body. So you're not only committing adultery on your wife, but adultery with God, love of money. Did y'all know that fornication? Okay, let's continue. That's the, it's called the spirit of whoredoms. All right. Spirit of infirmity, bent body, spine, impotent, frail, lame, asthma, hay fever, allergies. Did y'all know every, okay. And I'm so sick of this, about mental illness, some preachers are even saying that. I don't know how many times I got to say, I guess to the day I'm gone, huh? Everything is a spirit. I don't know what Bible y'all reading. The world and came in, um, middle illness, you know, um, it's the devil is a lie. That's a spirit. Jesus came to cast out every spirit. He showed the disciples to cast out spirits. We have a body of Christ that don't want to cast out spirits. I tell you what. If you are holy and righteous and you got power from up above, you need to cast that thing out. And I promise you, there won't be no mental and no illness. How you like that? Praise God. Deaf and dumb spirit. Spirit of bondage. Spirit of fear. Seducing spirit. Oh, that's what's happening. I just said that. Hypocritical lies. Seared conscience attractions. Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. What I'm saying today, pretty much, praise God, praise God. Um, spirit of error manifestations, the spirit of poverty. Oh, come on somebody. So these are all spirits that I want to talk to you about because here's the deal. God told me, he said, Deanna, I have a church that don't believe in spirits. I have a church that don't understand. Well, wait a minute. You don't have the power because you're not living right. One of the things that made me live right is because I wanted the power of Jesus Christ. I wanted to do this thing the right way. When God really called me on myself and exposed myself, I said, God, well, how do I do it? He said, follow me. No, you're not going to be perfect. But he said, get in your word. Stay holy. Touch not the unclean thing. Don't fornicate. Don't lie. Don't do this. Don't do that. We have a church that's trying to operate ungodly and yet do godly things. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You got to do this thing for real if you want the power of Jesus Christ. Because here's the deal. The power of the Holy Ghost cannot dwell in an unclean temple. So if you unclean, you can't cast out nothing. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So spirits are real. So I suggest that you get in your word and everybody deals with spirits on every level. You have to make sure God examine yourself every day. God is there anything into in me? Expose it to me. And if not, expose it to my mentor so they can help me. A lot of people, the reason why they don't want to get close to people because they're scared they're going to be exposed. You will be. If anyone truly has a gift, God would expose them. I, I, you, you know it's the truth. Because the wisdom and discernment is real. It works with the spirit of truth. It works with the spirit of prophecy. There's no way you can hide. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. People be trying to hide. You can't hide when, when you're around a spirit filled person. I'm gonna tell you right now. And it don't matter how much you try to spirits are real. Quit letting just anybody lay hands on you. God says, quit letting just anybody speak into your life. Start praying, start meditating, start fasting. You guys, we are, we are losing our war, but don't worry. God is raising up a remnant that's powerful. That won't compromise. That don't worry about money. That don't worry about sex. Yeah, I said it. Cause you know why a lot of people are tainted sex power. I said this the other day, last week power. You give people power. You'll find out who they are. Money and sex are the things that taken out men and women of God. You got to love God more than power. You got to love God more than sex. You got to love God more than money. And to be honest with you, where your heart is, that is your treasure, says the Lord. Hallelujah to his name. So I'm going to get on here later because I got to tell y'all what happened to me yesterday. I will give you a clue. Um, I was in a store yesterday and I was getting some stuff so to make some more spices and things of that nature. And somebody did something to me and, um, he caught me off guard. Oh yes. He caught me off guard, <laughs> but don't worry. You already know I'm addressed that, right? 
And, and when I left, I was like, I said, God, what just happened? I said, wow, you got to understand this is a spiritual war and the enemy is always trying to taint us. Always. And, and touch, try to touch us, try to taint us. You remember I told y'all um, this happened in um, Big Lots in California when I was in the store. And I told you this guy every hour. And I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't handle it then like I handled it yesterday. Then I, I was, I still was a little, you know, it, this was like, what, seven years ago. And I got on the phone with somebody and I started talking loud so the guy can hear it. I said, I'm telling you right now, if this guy come on this aisle and try to touch me again, I'm going to flip him. <laughs> and then I say some other things, truth be told, but I'm just telling you this stuff real. I don't think y'all understand how witchcraft you see the power of God Okay, let me explain this before I get on here so you understand what I'm trying to say. The power of God comes from above. So you don't own anything. All we do is we pray and we ask God, God, um, anoint us. The anointing is the power of God, but it comes from God. You're not doing anything to try to get it. The demonic entity, the other side, the witchcraft, they pray to the devil. And this is what he says. I'm going to give you this power to do this evil, but I'm going to require your soul. That's why when y'all ask me, well, can people come back? Why don't you answer that question? Because guess what? Here's the deal. The Bible says, choose who you serve. So hold on. If you choose and willingly and you sell your soul, can you unsell your soul? Another question. Can you unsell your soul? So when I get up on here, because I was going to give y'all some answers, but no, I'm not. I want you to really think. Now, when I get back up on here, I'll give you those answers to the three questions that I asked. I asked y'all, number one, was the disciples part of any church? Now, they preach that church and teach at church, but was they part of any church? Number two, who was the real church? Was it the Pharisees and the Sadducees that has the sector? And the third one now, can you unsell your soul? So I'm going to remember those three questions. I pray that you do. And give me some answers when I get back. I'll give you the answers when I get back on. But I'm just, I'm just anxious to know if y'all know the truth. Because that's what this is all about. That's why so many people are lost. Some don't care about the truth. Some don't want to hear the truth. And some will be dying because they didn't want to know the truth. And that's a sad thing to die without Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So I pray that this blessed you guys. I pray that it helped you guys. God bless you. God keep you. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Roll out soldiers for that is who we are. God bless.